shoot, eh? Where have you been? One week vacation, you turn it into two. Where were you? Kenya, I knew it. You were after that your girlfriend in Kenya. Hey, you know, we'll talk after the service. Now we have to shoot. What's up, my people? It's your girl, Adela. I am so sorry. It was supposed to be one week vacation. And I was back after one week. But imagine this boy. He refused to show up. He was calling me from Kenya, telling me his flight was delayed. He ain't Calling the world, you have issues. <laughs> You apologize later. One week vacation, you disappeared. You think I cannot replace you? You always think I cannot do without you. After this service, I will deal with you. As I was saying, my people, a lot has happened in the last two weeks. But before we get into what has happened, after my last episode, many of you sent me pictures of you celebrating with Oga Buhari when he was declared the winner of the presidential elections in Nigeria from all over the world. Thank you, thank you, every one of you. And as you guys know, I love seeing faces of viewers, you know. So thank you very much, everybody that sent me pictures from all over the world. And then I heard about the man who vowed that if Buhari should win the elections that he would walk from Lagos, that is a equally to ABJ Abuja. I was like, che! I said this one don't pass our level. Ah, my brother. <laughs> My name is Suleiman Hashimu. Okay. I'm indigenous of Funtua from Kasina State. I'm based in Ibadan. I started my journey from Lagos. Yes, my brother. We're very proud of you. And he did it. It took him 20 days, but he did it. While wow, some people are busy yabbing the man. Oh, he's just seeking attention. Thousands of people welcomed this man. And he got royal reception when he got to Abuja. In fact, in many of the places where he stopped on his way, he got royal reception. Some people even gave him money. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the guy is invited to the inauguration ceremony, you know? And by the way, my dear, have they sent my invitation to the inauguration and my first class plane ticket to Niger? Eh? They have not? What do you mean it has not arrived? Eh? Oh God, why do you have not sent my invitation? Hey, look at these people, eh? How do you have an inauguration without me being there? There is God, though. There is God. By the way, where is this woman? I haven't seen this woman since they announced that uh, Buhari won the election. I have not seen this woman. Where is she? At least let her suffer so she knows that some of us are worried about her. Now, some enemies of progress were circulating rumors the whole week that a former president, Olusha Gunobasanjo, returned 200 million dollars. Dollars, yo, into the treasury of Nigeria. Hey! Come and see me excited and happy. I said, ah, change is here. Hey, this is the change we are hoping for. Only for me to hear that it was a rumor. I said, change. He paid me so much. I don't know why anybody would make up such a story. But you know, he thought the people that have been borrowing money from our treasury would return it. Eh? Because I don't want to call them thieves. Although that is what they are, they are thieves. You know, we are very broke right now. We need the money. Instead of them trying to seek asylum in different countries, just return the money that you've stolen, yeah, yeah, yeah? At least that would, you know, that, that, ah, my brother, che. Hey, my mom must you, did I say anybody's name? Ah, you know the woman has denied it. You are your own, this one that you are always pulling trouble. Although, if she's seeking asylum, it's not as if she will say, yes, I'm seeking asylum, but she denied it, must you put it on? If all the thieves, I mean, all the officials that borrowed money would return it, eh? You know, we won't have to continue dipping our hands into the foreign reserve. So you can imagine how upset I was when I heard that Nigerian officials have stolen more than 20 trillion dollars not trillion naira in fact not one trillion dollars i'm talking about 20 trillion dollars economic and financial crimes commission says about 20 trillion dollars has been stolen from the treasury by leaders between 1960 and 2005. the commission also said that by the year 2000 100 billion dollars had been stolen with an external debt of 33 billion dollars saying sure you see what i'm saying and by the way by the way um you do hear this from me hold on okay punch newspaper published a story oh hey they said that mr president spent two trillion naira of our money oh you know it's a zoologist you don't think he has that kind of money they said he spent two trillion naira of our money during his campaign hey whoa hey whoa hey gang gang in case you are wondering, that is ten billion dollars. See, ten billion, just like that. Ah, oh, my father and oh my God, ten billion, ten billion. I think you know by ah, Olu Agbami. Now that he lost elections, they say he wants people to return his money. Genge, Nigeria, too much drama. As if anybody will return any money that they've collected. <laughs> by the way, the presidency denied it too, so you know maybe it was a lie. Although we don't. Imagine that they will admit that it is true if it were to be true. In any case, 
You know what is so funny? All these Nigerians that were saying that Jonathan should be given a Nobel Prize because he considered to defeat. They are the same set of people now saying that, oh, Jonathan should be jailed because of the two trillion. I said, check, Nigerians. Now, in Asabio, now we use make them give them Nobel Prize. Eh? Somebody told me that apparently with one billion naira, not dollar, so just one billion naira, you can employ 36 graduates and be paying them 100,000 naira every month for 23 years. See, that is 100,000 naira times 36 people times 12 months, which is one year. In a year, that is 43.2 million naira. And if you divide 1 billion naira by 43.2 million naira, you will get 23. So yes, that is what 1 billion naira can do. Now, don't tell me that 100,000 naira per month is too small when the minimum wage is 18,000 naira. That is more than times five of the minimum wage. Now, so many graduates out there will take a job of 20,000 naira just to survive. So to think that stealing 1 billion naira is like taking away the lives of 36 graduates for 23 years makes me wonder about the billions of dollars that have gone missing in Nigeria. You know, when I heard about how much was spent, the two trillion, which is $10 billion, I said to myself, what could be done with this money? And then I remember seeing this video of this really beautiful building in Dubai that was built with $2 billion, two, just $2 billion. I mean, how much did Jonah spend on his campaign again? 10, 10 billion. So whatever I show you right now, uh, the money that Mr. Jonathan supposedly spent, which he has denied. Once again, he has denied it, but just in case the story were to be true, this money would have built five of this building I'm about to show you. I know that I show you too many videos of Dubai on this show. I'm so sorry, but it's because I feel like Dubai started like, they, were, they started like yesterday. There's no reason why we shouldn't have overtaken them. Hopefully this will challenge us too, that we should also do more in our country. Let's take a look. Welcome to Dubai's newest landmark destination hotel, the Maidan. A brand new $2 billion race course opens in Dubai to host the richest race on earth. $2 billion! Check! Ogadjono must cough out this money. He must cough out. Do you know what Nigeria could have been like today with $20 trillion dollars like i can't even process it in my mind we're supposed to not only be leading africa we should be one of the most advanced countries in the world this new administration has a lot to do in retrieving back the stolen money don't forget abacha's money that the u.s is trying to return as well please for the sake of the lives of millions of nigerians that have been altered by these thieves yes bring back a stolen wealth bring back the glory of nigeria and speaking of bringing back stolen items i I am so happy for the woman in Suruleri, Lagos, Mrs. Orekoya, whose three boys were kidnapped and taken ransom for 13 million naira. I'm so happy that the boys were found. Imagine the youngest is only 11 months and three of them were kidnapped by their nanny in conjunction with kidnappers for days. Now, this is just to tell all the parents out there, please be careful who you leave your children with and who you let into the lives of your kids. Don't ever trust someone that you don't know. Uh, just be careful just be careful that's all I would say but while I'm very happy that this woman is rejoicing and reunited with her children I can't help but think about the parents of the Chibo girls I honestly cannot believe that a year after the kidnapping these girls will still be missing so I understand that our leaders in Nigeria don't care about the common people and please don't tell me that Mr. President cares because he did not until six weeks to the election and whatever momentum he built during the six weeks had died down if Mr. President doesn't know where his daughter is for two weeks by now everybody will be running around in Nigeria. So please don't tell me that he truly cares. But why is it that regular Nigerians also don't care about these missing girls? By now we know that this story was not made up. At least we've heard about the 57 of them that escaped on their own. At the beginning, people protested and then it died down. If these were Unilag students that were kidnapped, <laughs> by now everywhere in Lagos would be scattered. Once it's students would stop traffic, they would burn police stations, we would 
do anything to force the government to do more. Why are we so selfish in Nigeria? If we are not directly affected by something in Nigeria, we could care less. Boko Haram killed 15,000 people and so many people are still saying, well, it's just Northerners killing themselves. I've had some Christians saying, oh, they were trying to kill Christians. Now they are killing themselves. And I'm like, God cares about each of these lives. A viewer by the name Victoria sent me an email with the link to the story where some of the girls that escaped said that they were raped several times in a day. You know, if someone was raped, it could take years to overcome that trauma. Not to talk about being raped by several people, being molested, being brainwashed for the whole year. But I like to express my gratitude to all those that did not forget about those girls. Like this man, he's been counting the abduction days every day on his Instagram page. And the Brimbaka Girls protesters in Nigeria, Dr. Obi Asik Wesili, and so many other people that have protested every single day since these girls were kidnapped. You know, we had a service here in New York as well to commemorate a year since their abduction. You know, I was so disappointed that at least 70% of the people that were there we're not Nigerians and I'm like where are the Nigerians in New York eh? many people said oh they were not aware of the service or the protest but you know I was still disappointed because I was like so did you organize your own I mean the Empire State Building here was lit up in purple and red in honor of the girls that night and we marched to the Nigeria house to protest I just wish Nigerians would pressure the government to do more please bring back our girls let justice prevail Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Speaking of justice, it's been 15 years now that 14 secondary school students and a journalist who was also a volunteer with the Red Cross were gone down by security officers in broad daylight in the Gambia. Now, for several months, the students had been asking for justice for two of their colleagues, a male student who was tortured to death by the Gambian firefighters, and a female student, 13-year-old girl, 13-year-old, who was raped by uniformed security officers. I mean, it's not too much for these students to ask for justice for their colleagues. Now, after several months of no justice for their mates, the students decided to protest. And that was when 14 of them, not one student, not even five, I'm talking about 14 young boys and girls were gunned down in broad daylight with AK-47 and machine guns all because they dared to ask for justice for their friends really now an eyewitness actually said that he saw a girl that they running and as she was running away from these security officers they shot her at the back of her head and he saw the bullet come out right above her eye just before she collapsed just imagine that imagine being there 15 families shattered for life and parents have not remained the same till today mr president who was traveling at the time reportedly gave the order for the soldiers to stop quote and unquote, the bastards from protesting, and that was why they shot them. Now, to make things worse, till today, Yaya Jamin has never addressed this issue. He has never said his story. Nobody was arrested or prosecuted till today. Him and his vice president, Isato Saidi, who's actually a woman, pretending as if nothing happened, leaving the parents to bury their children. How sad. Some of those who survived, by the way, became paralyzed because of the gunshots, and they are yet to be compensated, not even even for hospital bills or even given money for them to buy wheelchairs. Just imagine that. I'm glad though that my Gambian people all over the world did not forget what happened on April 10 and 11th. Here are pictures of some Gambians protesting in front of the White House, demanding for justice for these families and the students, as well as saying once again that it's time for Jermaine to step down. Yes. And you know what? I, I couldn't believe when I heard that Jermaine has also refused to reduce fuel price in his country, despite the fact that oil price has dropped all over the world. Now, most of them are complaining about high taxes and lack of electricity as well as how hard it is to compete with Mr. President's various businesses. You know, Jamin has all kinds of businesses. I mean, how do you compete with Mr. President when he has all the resources? So there will also be an election in the Gambia next year. And I am waiting to see what will happen because I know that for someone like Jamin, he will not step down voluntarily, especially if you should think about all the not so good things that he has done, like the students that were killed. I don't think he will step down voluntarily, but you know, you guys know, I don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. 
And speaking of elections, Sudan, not South Sudan, but Sudan, had its elections last weekend. Yeah, I mean, I'm so sorry. I, I was trying to say they had their extension, extension of Mr. President Stenoche, you understand? <laughs> yes, yes, because, you know, the man has been there for 25 years and he still ran in this year's election. Just imagine that. Like, what? I don't know what is wrong with some African leaders. They get there and they never want to leave. By the way, people said that this is the second, the second multi-candidate election to ever be held in Sudan since al-Bashar came to power in 1989, which was in a coup. But you know, how do you call this a multi-candidate election when the major opposition parties boycotted the elections? Hey, you know, they didn't even participate at all because they already know who's gonna win the election. Majority of the candidates on the ballot papers were independent candidates. And you know, you already know you can't beat Mr. President. So a lot of people got on the ballot paper without any affiliation with any political party. And the funny thing is, everywhere you go in Sudan, I heard that you will only see Mr. President's billboards <laughs> and posters, you know, on TV as well, which is owned and controlled by him. They were only talking about him as if he's the only candidate. Apparently though, he has monopoly on advertising on state-owned TV stations. They don't take adverts from other candidates, so all you see on TV from morning till night is, oh, Mr. President is running for re-election. <laughs> by the way, this is the video of Mr. President voting you know all the ceremony about him voting for himself again after 25 years <laughs> So guess what happened? The people of Sudan revolted by boycotting the election. So yes, so yes, majority of the people did not register, they refused to, and majority of those who registered did not show up for elections. <laughs> In one neighborhood where about 3,000 people registered to vote, only 30 people, 30 <laughs> showed up for elections. In another place with thousands of registered voters, only 85 people showed up. Voting officials were actually going to work with March because they know they would just sleep most of the day while praying that people will come out to vote. It's so funny because a lot of foreign observers and foreign journalists wrote in their stories that when they got to Sudan for the elections, people were like, why are you here? And they were like, well, we're here for the elections. And a lot of people were like, oh yeah, there is an election, right? Ah, we didn't even realize it. You're welcome, you're welcome. Just imagine that. I was really confused, by the way, when they announced that the elections will be three days. I was like, three days of voting? What? Three days of voting? Who does that? And guess when the result will be announced? The 27th of this month. That means that they will take at least two weeks before they announce the result. Like, what? They will make sure that everything Rigebu has been rigged before announcing the result. Now, when people refused to show up in three days, <laughs> they decided to extend it to four days. I was like, oh my God, this is a total failure. Now, the ruling party campaigners, they literally started going from door to door, begging people to come out and vote. Just imagine, che! they were giving people money and all kinds of rewards just to get them to come and vote. And when they started going from door to door, the people were ready for them. A lot of people wrote on their walls, leave, as in don't come inside, we don't want you. <laughs> Other people were more detailed in what they wrote on their doors. Listen to this, dear candidates, don't bother knocking, don't bother knocking. This family is boycotting the election, so save yourself the embarrassment. Who not I'm not aligned with any political movement but I'm against this fake elections and the government obsession with trying to make everyone believe that lie that people are participating in this sham Ooh, snap I love my Sudanese people you see this is what I'm saying <laughs> if they try to protest policemen will stop them so people decided to write all kinds of stuff on their doors you know which I really really appreciate now this was written by a Sudanese activist Zara Heida explaining why people decided to boycott the election people are boycotting because they this is a government that humiliated, terrorized, and made us lose hope, as well as stole our dreams. Wow, wow, now that's deep. The government has stolen a lot of dreams in Sudan. Wow, that's so true. When the government doesn't do what it's supposed to do, they end up robbing people of their dreams. Now, in case some of you have forgotten, this same man, Al-Bashar, was the one responsible for the genocide in Darfur, in his country, that claimed the lives of more than 400,000 people. And you displaced more than 2.5 million 
of your own people. And you know, till today, his government disputes these estimates, they deny any connection with the Yanja wheat that they used at the time. He still wanted at the Hague, by the way, which is why he's clinging to power so badly. So now you guys understand why people in Sudan will boycott the elections. I mean, extensions of his tenure, that's what I should say. Because of all the stuff that the president has done in 25 years and the fact that he's refusing to step down. And guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Now, this is one of those stories that makes me not only upset and frustrated, but confused. Why in the world would any black African kill another black African? Because they're doing so well and they are not from our country. Oh, we have to kill them. Really? South Africa? Really? All the people that are participating in this xenophobic attack, have you lost your mind? Exactly when will you grow up? When? If you have issues with apartheid, why take it out on other black Africans? Just because we're not South Africans? South Africans attacked foreigners because they believe that these foreigners are doing better than they and that these foreigners are still in the good jobs. <laughs> Just to let you guys know, a lot of South Africans actually have a different opinion about this. Listen to this Instagram uh, message written by a fellow South African. These people come here and work hard. Most of them come from war-torn countries or extremely poor countries, and they work twice as hard than most South Africans. Yet, lazy South Africans are just jealous of them. Today, I am not a proud South African. Wow. Wow. That was written by a fellow South African, testifying to the fact that some of these jobs were jobs that South Africans refuse to do in the first place. Which means many of these foreigners actually struggle to have the success that they have in South Africa. And now they have been hated for being successful. I've heard of some Zimbabweans that are so desperate to succeed in life that they would actually swim crocodile invested river just to get to South Africa and take up any job. Some of these people have their PhDs, by the way, before going to South Africa, and they would take up any job until they can walk their way up. By the way, South Africans travel too. They are in different parts of the world and they take up jobs in foreign countries. Should they also be treated the same way that immigrants have been treated in South Africa? You know, as I'm speaking with you guys, more than 2,000 foreigners have become refugees in Durban alone. And this attack on foreigners broke out in different parts of South Africa. For weeks, they've been looting the homes and shops of foreigners, beating them, and even killing them. Now, this is the picture of a foreigner armed with a knife because there's nowhere else for him to run to. The attackers were going from door to door, asking, is there a foreigner in this house? Bring them out. We'll deal with them. Just imagine that kind of mentality. You know, I saw this picture and I just, I couldn't get it out of my mind. How do you forgive something like this? By the way, the man who took this picture, a white South African by the name James Otwe, uh, instead of saving the guy, he was taking pictures. He said it's because he wanted the world to see what was happening. And I'm like, Che, for real? Why can't you just be a human being first? Be a human being first and then you can you can take pictures later. Because the guy is white, he could have actually used his influence because they were not attacking white people. And you know, many people do this as well. They will see tragedy and they will be filming instead of helping. Accidents, people are filming the accident instead of getting them to the hospital. He said he later took him to the hospital, but it was too late waiting for him to get stabbed before you take him to the hospital. No, 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 I don't buy it. So I heard that all this started when the Zulu king made a hate speech. I hope that this king is brought to justice for the lives of all these innocent people. He said that he didn't say foreigners should be attacked. He just said that those that are bad among foreigners should pack and leave. I'm like, really? How clever? You know, I was so glad to hear what Julius Malema had to say to Mr. President Jacob Zuma about this. You have lost control of the country because you have lost control of your own family. Your own son continues to say these people must be killed. You stand up here and you do not say anything. You do not take a platform to ask the king to call upon the people of KwaZulu-Natal and everywhere else. Tell him, my brother, tell him. Can you imagine? Apparently, Zuma's son is part of this whole thing. Eh? Jacob Zuma has failed. Seriously, he waited too late to consider sending out soldiers when it was quite evident that the police couldn't restrain the people. By the way, I'm sure that many of you have seen the man pretending to be a South African xenophobic leader saying on video that, oh, they will kill all foreigners in South Africa. They only have 14 days. If they don't get out, they will kill them. We don't care what we talk about South Africans, but we shall continue killing 
fellow Africans. In fact, you talked about killing seven Gambians. For once, I killed seven Gambians yesterday. I told my people, just go look for whoever Gambians live in Cape Town. Go look, search for who any Gambian living in Dubai. Apparently, he's a Ugandan comedian hoping to make a video that would get him on CNN. Who does that? You know, before he made the video, he posted it on his Facebook page that I'm going to make a video that I'm hoping will go viral. What can I do? And people were giving him ideas. I'm like, who does that? Really? How do you even play with something like this? This is not funny. Do you think now I want to watch your jokes? No, no. I'm like really turned off right now. Later, he released an apology video, but it's too late. The deed is already done. And I should put this out there that not all South Africans are responsible for this not all south africans hate other africans so please don't take out your anger on people that are not responsible for what's happening in south africa by the way while we're pointing fingers at south africans let me remind you that the death toll is only about 10 people it's horrible it's bad what's going on in south africa but i'm saying this because more people have been killed in other african countries by people of their own country let me not even go into nigeria boko haram people are nigerians becoming terrorists inside Nigeria. And in Sudan, the president was responsible for the genocide in Darfur that killed more than 400,000 people. I'm just saying that while we're pointing fingers at South Africa, let's not forget what is going on in our own countries as well. If we will condemn what is going on in our countries the same way we are condemning what is going on in South Africa, if we will crucify the government that we have the same way we are crucifying South Africans, you know, they will actually do something. And you know, my deepest condolences to the families of the Somalians that have been killed in South Africa, uh, Zimbabweans, I don't know why they hate Zimbabweans so, and Ethiopians, in fact, I don't know why Ethiopians are being killed in, in different parts of the world. You guys heard about ISIS killing Ethiopians in Libya. They killed 16 at one time, they killed 12 at another time. Why? 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 And they're targeting Nigerians as well in South Africa. They say that Nigerians are too loud and flashy. I read on a blog that they killed Nigerians as well, but I found out that wasn't true. Nevertheless, they're harassing Nigerians as well. So I heard that other countries have been sending planes to get their people out of South Africa. Even Malawi has been taking out its own people. Eh? Hey. And just imagine that Nigeria's Minister of State Foreign Affairs is still saying that we are monitoring the situation. Hey. Ah, my brother. Hey, your daffo. Is this not Abanikoro? Is the minister? Hey, that is God. That is God. Ah, why? This person is not serious. Eh? This is when people are being harassed in South Africa. He keeps saying, we have, what are you monitoring? Eh? Would they call you before they hack somebody down? Ah. I beg, come on. Really, South Africans, get it together. Just get it together. Enough already. But you guys know I don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.